Welcome to the Word Examined Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Wagner, intern pastor and true crime enthusiast. This season, we will continue to dive into the ultimate true crime story, the life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. This is a story you may have heard before, but I hope that with this telling, you can place yourself in the story and consider what it would have been like to shout Hosanna at the triumphal entry, share a meal at the Last Supper, or bear witness to one of the most brutal forms of murder in our history. I'm glad you're on this journey with me. Let's get started. Last time on the Word Examined podcast, we found ourselves in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus was arrested and betrayed by one of his own disciples, Judas. After Jesus was arrested, he was led away to the high priest's home for them to figure out what to do with him next. Judas, in his shame and guilt, had killed himself. We continue this week with what follows. This week, we find ourselves just hours now before Jesus' murder, when he is on trial before the governor, and the crowd is given an important choice. An important note about this week's episode. This episode contains descriptions of violence that some listeners may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. There was a large crowd gathering outside the governor's quarters, and this crowd was not only growing in size, but in volume by the minute. It was quite the atmosphere shift. Earlier in the week, Crowds were praising Jesus, this man from Nazareth, who was teaching them radical things about God and God's work in the world. And now, things had drastically changed. There was anger and tension in the air. The streets were filled with crowds that were condemning Jesus, begging for him to be punished, asking for him to be killed. It was through these streets that Jesus was led as they made their way toward the governor. The chief priests, elders, and the scribes brought Jesus to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. As they approached Pilate, Jesus looked into the crowd and was disheartened by what he saw. He looked into the eyes of those in the crowd. He saw anger, hatred. He saw people of all ages there to condemn him, there to plead for his death. Looking back up toward the governor, Jesus waited for him to speak. The chief priest spoke up loudly, pleading their case. This man has committed crimes against the emperor. He's a deviant. He forbid us to pay taxes to the emperor. He claims he is the Messiah, a king. At the mention of the word king, Pilate's attention was piqued. Were they saying what Pilate thought they were? This man was claiming to be the Messiah, a king? These were some serious charges they were claiming. These were charges that went against social order, charges that would create chaos in their systems of government. This was a problem. But he wasn't sure that this man should be condemned to death because of it. However, Pilate could see the growing tension and knew that the crowd was going to be adamant about it. Hearing the charges against this man that stood before him, Pilate turned to Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus immediately replied, You say I am. Taking this man at his word, Pilate turned back to the chief priests and the crowd. I find no basis for an accusation against this man. Infuriated by Pilate's response, the crowd became more agitated, and the chief priests spoke above the growing noise. But this man stirs up people by his teaching all over Judea, all over Galilee. He is causing chaos among our people. When Pilate heard that Jesus was a Galilean, he knew a way to appease the crowd. This man is a Galilean, he asked. Then he should be sent to Herod's jurisdiction. He needs to be put on trial there. So off they went. They had heard that Herod himself was in Jerusalem at this time. So they took Jesus to see Herod. 
When Herod heard that Jesus of Nazareth would be coming to see him, he was enthused. You see, Herod had been wanting to meet Jesus for some time. He had heard about all the things that Jesus was doing and wanted to see for himself. He wanted to see Jesus perform a miracle in front of him. So, when Jesus came in front of Herod, brought by a frustrated group of chief priests, Herod began to question Jesus, to try anything to get to see some of the amazing things that Jesus has done for others. But Herod got nowhere with Jesus. Jesus gave him no answers and performed no miracles. Irritated by Jesus' apathy toward the situation, Herod grew more aggravated. The chief priests and scribes continued to badger Jesus, mock him, and treat him with contempt, but Jesus said nothing. Jesus stood stoically in their presence. When Herod saw that Jesus would not cooperate with their requests, they placed a robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. He could do nothing if Jesus wouldn't speak. Herod waved his hand in annoyance and sent them away. So once again, they headed back to see Pilate to see what they could do with this Jesus. There is nothing more inspiring than seeing our youth share their faith. So join us at Trinity Lutheran in Boyceville for our Palm Sunday Youth Service at 9 a.m. on April 10th. Hear preaching from one of our high school students. See our Sunday school youth share music and lead parts of the service. Experience a skit put on by our high school youth. Join us on Palm Sunday, April 10th for our youth service and be inspired by the next generation of disciples. Pilate's head dropped as he saw who was coming back into his presence. It was this Jesus again, the man he had sent to Herod. Pilate wasn't entirely surprised because he had heard that Herod wasn't able to get anywhere with him either. So he had come back. Pilate knew that this was a pivotal moment for him. He looked out and saw an even angrier crowd than before. He stood to address the people. You brought this man to me before, who you said was causing chaos among the people of this city. I examined him in your presence and found him not guilty of any of your charges against him. So I sent him to Herod, and Herod found nothing against him either. So now he has come back to us. He has done nothing to deserve death. So this is what I will do. I will have him flogged, and then we will release him. Thinking he had satisfied the crowd with the solution to their problem, Pilate stepped away from his post. But he was wrong. So wrong. When he had finished speaking, the angry crowd became aggressive and filled with hatred for this man. They began to shout, Get rid of this man! Release Barabbas! Pilate was amazed. Release Barabbas? But this was a man who was put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city. He had murdered someone. He deserved to be punished. It was customary that at Passover, Pilate would release a prisoner. But this? This is who they wanted released? Pilate turned once again to address the crowd. But there was no point. His reasoned words had no chance against the chanting of the crowds. All Pilate could hear was, Crucify him! Crucify him! Over and over and over. Pilate mustered his energy to try to get his voice above the crowd. Why? What evil has he done? He does not deserve death. I will have him flogged and then release him. But yet again, Pilate's attempt to release Jesus was futile. The crowd grew even louder, demanding that Barabbas be released and Jesus be crucified. Pilate knew now that his opinion carried no weight. To save his own skin and future in politics, Pilate knew what he had to do. He gave his verdict and granted their request. At that moment, Barabbas was released, a murderer set free to roam the streets of this city. And Jesus, an innocent man, would be put to death. Pilate addressed this crowd one more time. Do with him what you will. I wash my hands of his blood. 
Pilate placed his hands into the basin in front of him and washed his hands as a message to this crowd, a message that Pilate would have no more to do with this. He was done. He was finished. But they were not. As soon as Jesus was turned over to the crowd, the mocking and the abuse intensified. Jesus held his silence, for he knew what was to come. This was the plan all along. Jesus knew his time to die was near, and that he would suffer greatly at the hands of these people, these people filled with hatred and loathing, these people oozing vitriol and lies. But Jesus was doing this for them. They wouldn't understand now, but later they would. Later, they would realize that his death would change everything. Later, they would realize what they had done, what they had done to the Son of God. As Jesus walked through the crowd and toward his death, he could hear the crowd mocking him. Hail, King of the Jews! People spat on him. He was stripped of his clothes. Then he felt a great pain on his head. Someone had fashioned him a crown meant to mock him as a king. But it was no ordinary crown. It was made of thorns. A sharp and crude crown. As it was forced on his head, Jesus could feel the blood trickle down his face and into his eyes. This was it. His time was near. His last breath would be soon. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. When he opened them, he saw his instrument of torture and death in front of him. A large wooden cross. Next time on the Word Examined podcast, we near the end of our story as we will bear witness to the brutal murder and public execution of Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Today's episode was brought to you by Joseph and Sons Carpentry Shop of Nazareth. Joseph and Sons Carpentry Shop is the place for all your carpentry needs. We build chairs, tables, and more with the utmost quality and craftsmanship for a reasonable price. Also at this time, we are hiring as one of the sons has left to be savior of the world. Apply today for a fulfilling and well-paying job with great benefits. Located in the heart of Nazareth, Joseph and Sons Carpentry Shop. Quality and value for you. Thank you for listening. This podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Katie Wagner. The Word Examined Podcast. Available on Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.